On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we are here with my 2011 Chevy Camaro V6. I paid only $4,000 for it, and the dealership said the engine is unsavable. So today, we're going to try to save it. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and today we are here in the Car Ninja shop as you can see because he's a dealer for BG products. And today's video we're going to use a bunch of BG products gear and solutions to try to save this engine. So the dealership provided a whole bunch of pictures underneath the valve covers, the variable valve timing solenoids, full of sludge, dirt, old oil. I'm sure this thing had a rough life, not a lot of oil changes. Today we're going to try to save it with BG's dynamic treatment and I think this is going to work out. Hopefully when we take the valve covers back off to do the timing chains, this thing is clean as a whistle inside. As soon as this is done, I'm going to do the timing chains. Uh, I figured this needed to be done first because it'll take out most of the sludge and then we won't have to try to remove it mechanically and drop it down into the engine and a big mess. So today I've got a full oil change, the dynamic treatment, two oil filters. What we're going to do first is drain the oil all the way down, put a new oil filter in it and fill this thing with the dynamic engine flush. Now you can't actually buy this, which is why we're here at the Car Ninjas, because a dealer or a mechanic that sells BG has to do this. So you've got a can of 44K in this box, a can of MOA in the box, instructions, this big old thing, and that whole thing goes in the engine, six quarts there, and then a big old thing of rinse oil, then you run after the engine cleaner. Now it does look like I messed up already. You need three oil filters for this. You change the oil filter, dynamic engine cleaner, change the oil filter, rinse oil, change the oil filter, real oil fill, and then of course add MOA to the, uh, the last oil change that you're gonna actually run. But to start with, you do put some 44K in the tank. So let's go ahead and start with that. Ah, oh, Johnny has special tools here. He's got a funnel that goes right on the can. And now we can just pour our 44K directly into the fuel tank, just like that. Whole can, 20 gallons. So we'll be slightly over the concentration here. So I'm not gonna pull the valve covers off or do an inspection to start with. I have the dealership's inspection that they did for the previous owner when they uh, said the engine needed to be replaced after they saw all the sludge. I will show you all those pictures right now. We've got the variable valve timing solenoids. We've got the valve covers off, right and left banks. And what's really odd is one side's super clean, one side is super dirty. When this is done, both sides better be absolutely perfect. I will start by just getting rid of this thing because it's just gonna cause problems. And now we can get to the cartridge filter, much easier. I guess I can't be upset about that cartridge filter because it is very easy to get on and off. Uh, very accessible, that is. And you can just toss a wrench on it. It's probably uh, actually SAE, but 24 in metric will get it done. And it's incredibly hot because I drove up here. I don't know if the dealership changed that or not, but it's not the worst looking filter I've ever seen in my life. And uh, I don't see any debris down in there. That oil is not pretty, but at least there's not a lot of sludge built up down in there. That is some nasty oil coming out of there. But we're gonna drain down, lower the car, fill it with the dynamic. This is of course my first time seeing underneath the Camaro. And what we have here appears to be a very clean car. The underbody tray was gone, which is, you know, typical, but there is no scraping on anything. There's no scraping all the way down the frame here. Kind of impressive. Uh, the exhaust looks reasonable. There's a lot of red dirt, which means this was probably from Oklahoma originally. I don't have a car fax, but you know, red dirt, Oklahoma. Uh, trans, I don't see any leaks back there. Drive shaft looks clean, exhaust looks good. And, uh, let's see, no slop. Ha, huh. this thing seems pretty clean overall. Kind of impressed, I was expecting it to be very beat on the underside. And it looks like our first oil change is basically done. Drain down there, uh, let's put the plug back in, fill this thing up. The engine is full of dynamic, take six quarts, this is a six quart bottle. So I put that entire thing in there. And now 
it's time for the run. So I'm going to stick this outside. It idles for 45 minutes at 3,000 RPM. We've got a tool here that will hold the accelerator pedal at 3,000 RPM, and we're going to monitor the oil pressure remotely on the Autel. Luckily, that's really the only way we can see the oil pressure anyway. Okay, we've got it going on. I've got the hood open so this thing can cool. It's running at 3,000 RPM on the dot. She's, she's a screamer, like I said. You can hear the RPM varying just a little bit, which is kind of odd. It might be the variable valve timing trying to do its magic there. I've got the heat on max to try to cool the car. we got the pedal holder holding the pedal. And here, I'm trying to see the oil pressure. I would really love to see the oil pressure. And what I have here is, it's in here, engine oil pressure sensor, zero kilopascals which is not what I want to see. I know it has tons of oil pressure. Fuel and temp is 92C. Luckily, there's a little bit of wind today. Uh, I'm hoping that helps cool the engine while this is running. The gauge still says we're good. The scanner said we were good. And, uh, yeah, still good. Still holding 3,000 RPM. Also, I do want to say if this engine pops, it pops. And uh, I guess then we'll say it didn't work. There's a lot of dealerships and guys out here using this stuff to restore engines. And uh, I do hope it does work because it'll obviously save me a bundle. 35 minutes. 27 minutes left and the car ninja is in here knocking out multiple cars in just the time it takes to run that flush. Does it leak? Well, there's no Freon in it, so... I don't know, we gotta charge it still. So you found the problem. Always leaking inside. Always leaking inside. That's got, it looks like Knight Rider, but broken. Yeah. Well, the dash has to come out of this car to fix that. It's easy. Hey, it's ours. <laughs> Timer went off. Just pulled this thing back inside. I think we are ready to go. So we're going to get it back up in the air, drain the oil, get this filter out of there. It is so hot. But it, it was sitting outside running for 45 minutes at 3,000 RPM. So ready for stage two. Another filter and another flush. The car ninja wants to see what's gonna come out. I wanna see what's gonna come out. I think we'll all be interested to see how like black that oil is and how much grit and stuff comes out of there. I do think this stuff breaks down the sludge completely. So who knows, who knows? We're about to figure it out together. Leave a comment with what you think it's gonna do. Moment of truth, here's the filter. This is my uh, insulate my hand rag here because this thing is warm. I've seen worse, I guess. There is grit sitting in there. Oh, oh it's so hot yourself? A little bit. You can kind of see it on the walls. Yeah. And then in here on top of the filter, it looks like there's a little debris kind of sitting there, just tiny little pieces. Mm -hmm. right on the there's seat. a lot on the bottom. I will say that filter looks better than the last one already. <laughs> that is some thin looking oil. All that heat in it. Oh, look at the filter. That's got a, definitely pulled a lot of dirt out of the tank. Mm -hmm. Now we can wipe this thing out and uh, put another filter in, change the oil again. Look how, look at the steam coming off that oil. That is wild. Yeah, you can kind of see through it right there. What color was when you put it in? It was like a nice light, smells like 44K or fish oil, you know? And now it is black. You can see it's even a little red there where the light's shining through it. <laughs> it seems a little red. Hopefully that thing works. I hope so too, man. It no, just, it's supposed to break down all the exactly, sludge, yeah. and they say it's supposed to restore all the ring performance and everything mm -hmm. like that, free them up. So this might be just magic. I might bring this thing back for another 130,000 miles. No, you're pushing it. But. <laughs> yeah. BMWs only, right? Yeah. Here we go again, the rinse oil. I've got the funnel in there. We're just using a funnel this time because you are supposed to do this very fast. This has immediately drained the uh, cleaner and then run the rinse oil. So in a hurry, about to dump this in. Interesting note, the rinse oil is absolutely clear. Like that is a very, very clear liquid. We are off to the races again. Coolant temp looks good. And holding the throttle. Oh yeah, full heat. Help cool the engine down. And open the hood. I was mistaken, the second run with the rinse oil is only 20 minutes, so that's not that bad. I just uh, reread through the, through the paper here and allow engine to run in neutral, 3,000 RPM for 20 minutes. Drain it, install new oil. Who's ready for round three? Time to pop this off again 
and drain the oil down. This is really the only way we could do this, was put a socket on here and then uh, unscrew it real fast, rip it out and drop it. There's the rinse oil. It looks equally dirty. Red, that went from clear to like dark red. I hope this thing's perfect inside. We won't really know until I get this back down and uh, take a look at the filter. I did want to add in here that I bought all of this, so this is a fair and unbiased review when you guys finally see the results of it, if we pull the valve covers off wherever we're going with this. Um, if I'm not happy, you'll know. And uh, I definitely went to O'Reilly's for all the oil and filters. O'Reilly's, the superheroes, of course, somehow had three. Uh, I did go to an XP for the final and the normal wicks for the uh, two flushes. So we're going XP back in. Huge shout out to them for having all the parts I needed. Here we go again to pull the filter. My insulating rag in there. Filter does look very, very dark. But it doesn't look like a lot of particulate like the first one. So maybe we succeeded. I don't know. Let's pull the filter out of here. Whoa. If you remember when we first pulled that out, it's tough to get enough light in there. But there's beautiful looking oil and no particulate and the walls are clean. Those were all orange, kind of typical 100,000 mile engine orange. But now it looks absolutely new inside there. I'm not exaggerating, not kidding, that, that looks good. Now I do need to see under the valve covers and if we do the timing chains, we'll find out. But there's no timing chain rattle either. Uh, Car Ninja agrees that he can't hear a rattle. I don't hear a rattle. Take a look down inside. The whole housing looks new. I mean, we'll show a little before and after right now, but look at that. Uh, that is not an exaggeration, it looks new. Hey, the Car Ninja and myself are pretty impressed by these results here. It honestly might look like a new engine inside, just based on looking inside the filter housing and the filter cap, really, really, really like new engine looking. So we're gonna keep following this. You put in the MOA next, and then you fill it with the oil you're gonna run. So here goes the MOA pour this can in first, that way we can uh, accurately measure the oil going into the engine. And then I'll dump in the entire five quart bottle of 5W30 this thing takes. Advanced formula. Oh. We had an idea. Why don't we just pull the variable valve timing solenoid and uh, see if they're still covered in dirt. If these things were clogged up to the point where they couldn't actuate. So if we just reach in here, I pulled up 10 there, one connector right there, pulled that off. And now this should just come straight out. Yeah, maybe it needs a screwdriver. Oh, just kidding, I got it. There's still some debris on the screen right there, but it's not bad. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it off real quick, then we'll throw that back in. The trash is off the screens there. This thing's ready to go back in. Uh, I do think we've probably solved this thing. All right, I guess that's that. There wasn't much to this other than three oil changes in a row, which we both agree would probably clean up any engine pretty well. But obviously there are detergents in there. The engine looks better. And that's kind of as in-depth as we can get with the tech until the valve cover comes off. So uh, we do think it works so far. I mean, you, you thought it worked pretty well, right? I, I thought so too. Johnny's got to get out of here. The intake service is postponed until tomorrow because that takes a long time too and I don't want to hold him up. So let's get out of here, clear the codes again and see if the thing drives better. Still seems a little rough on idle here. And it seems like it's driving better though. Wish it didn't show all the scratches in the center console there. People were beating it up with cleaners and stuff like that. Well, that only took two seconds. They're back. It was kind of expected. We've got more to do on this car. I can really hear the timing chain rattle on that wall now. So we're doing timing chains. Hey, I know that guy. You guys want to do some videos with this guy? Cause uh, he wants to do some videos. Well, we made it back. It does drive nice. So tomorrow we go on with the cleaning of this engine. I think we'll have done a complete turnaround on this engine after the dynamic flush that we did today and then the intake service we're going to do tomorrow and then timing chains. So should be perfect after that I hope. I, I really hope that straightens everything out and uh, we'll pull the codes again see what it's coming up with now. Hopefully less codes. Anyway Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. This will some in-depth tech work on a, on a newer direct injected car. And uh, when it's done, maybe it'll be fast again. It feels a little slow. The dealerships that had clogged cats too. So there was a laundry list of work. Uh, that's why they said the engine had to be done. And that's why the owner gave up on this thing. So don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com where you can get cool shirts like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time.